Hello again, everybody. It is the coach. You're tuned in to Madden 19 on EA Sports. Up next, we've got a good one on tap between the visiting Arizona Cardinals and the Los Angeles Rams. With that, we're off to L.A. for the Rams home opener in their third season back home. Standing by, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Coach, thank you much. EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to the City of Angels, Los Angeles, California. Who said the crowds wouldn't embrace football being back in L.A.? You certainly couldn't tell that by what we saw a few moments ago. These folks are pumped up as their Rams get set to do battle with the Arizona Cardinals. Along with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, you look at this Rams team as they interplay. They come in off a loss in the opener last week. That one was on the road. Now they get their first taste here of home cooking. And what they're hoping to do is feed off the energy of the home crowd. Great tailgate, great fan support. Let's see if they can put it to good use. Meanwhile, for the visiting Cardinals here, they too were losers last week, so they're also hoping to get back in the win column. Something's got to give in this one, right? Both teams want to start a new streak, and they both want it to be a victory. This should be a fun one. Two clubs here, each looking to rebound from a week one loss as we're underway on EA Sports. This one taken from the seventh. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. So out come the Cardinals now for their opening drive. They'll be led out by the former Heisman Trophy winner and number one overall pick from Oklahoma. It's Sam Bradford. And the numbers were not pretty. I mean, they don't look right. When you throw two interceptions, no touchdown passes, there's no way to really make that work. But I thought there were a lot of positives in watching his game tape. I think he's close to putting out a good performance. Let's see if he can flip those numbers around in this game. And, of course, rally his team to a win. A big welcome back carry for David Johnson, who almost missed all of last year. And he'll take this up near the 35, maybe the 34. It's the Pro Bowl corner, a keep to lead there to stop it. And let's look now at the offensive starters for the Cardinals. And running back David Johnson was awfully popular in fantasy drafts in 2017, coming off of a year where he had 20 touchdowns, but had just 11 carries last season before a wrist injury shelved him for the season. Look for him to bounce back in a huge way in 2018. On second down, Johnson. And an alley to run. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. The numbers a week ago for Johnson. 19 carries, 77 yards. And how about that momentum run right there? Personally, what I do is I get right back to the line of scrimmage. I come right back at him before they get settled. He's locked in a little bit now. I'll guarantee he wants the ball again. Now a play fake here on first down. He's going to loft one deep left side here. Looking for Fitzgerald, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Akeem Tlaib. They are in a zone. Remember, folks, four interceptions for this defense a week ago. First drive, make it number five. And the focal point will be the people who pick the ball out of the air. But let's not forget, to make that happen, it has to be an excellent pass rush. Terrific coverage where they are plastered to the receivers. And then, of course, taking it away, making the catch, and going in the other direction. The Rams offense now. They get set and head back onto the field. Here's the first carry now for Todd Gurley. And a short gain here across the 10 to the 12. Tackle made there by Josh Bynes. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Here's Patty. Sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. They've got good playmakers on the offensive side of the ball. I don't know what happened last week to, to really hurt their performance and, and hold down their production, but 
I would dare say that this week in practice, there's a lot of talk about how they're going to increase their proficiency. And that was a good start getting the playmakers involved. You mentioned that to me pregame. That's what they did there. Yeah, I think a lot of people think the coaching staff really gets on them, and that's how they motivate them. Most of these guys are self-motivated. They have a lot of pride in their performance. Petty now. Dumps it off to Gurley. They only get two there, but on third and one, that's all they needed to keep the drive going. So when you saw him dump it off to the back, did you think he was going to pick up the first down there? <laughs> well, I knew one thing. It wasn't his primary target. At least it didn't look like it. Turned out to be the play they needed, though. And it's big because it's the opening drive. So converting that third down, keeping the play, not the play, the drive going. Yeah, it certainly appeared like his downfield targets were covered. Threw the little dump off to, the, to his back. And nice effort picking up the first down, though. And you're right. That opening drive, keep those chains moving. They go play action here on first down. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Anytime a defense can sit back in a zone like that, it tends to create a lot of congestion in the middle of the field. Makes it very hard to slot one in. Looked like I-4 at rush hour in your hometown of Orlando, Florida. An absolute mess. Here we go now. Now on second down, this is Gurley. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. And there we see an early burst that makes him one of the leading rushers in the league. Well, I want you to know, I listened to you yesterday when we were watching film. You said right down the word vision for him. It was on display there, wasn't it? It certainly was, because he allows the blocks to set up in front of him. And if that continues, it'll be a long afternoon for those guys trying to play some defense. And he'll get this up to about the 40. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave him with a second and two. And that was a good run. This is only one of nine guys to go over 1,000 yards in 2017. And I think you can't let him run wild here. What do you think, 100 yards, the measuring stick? Always. That is the threshold. You want to keep him under that if you want to play good defense. Play action. They'll throw. Throw left side. Complete to Cup. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. And it appears we've got a member of the Rams shaken up on that last play. While the training staff works on him, we'll step aside and be right back. down it's Gurley and they went the wrong way there losing yardage back at the 43 yard line a loss of a full three yards and now it's second down I like the strategy extra tight ends extra beef they want to run the football but that means they probably want to run it inside if you get strung out on the perimeter you're in peril yeah we saw the result negative yardage Set up a throw. Working the middle here. That's complete to Everett, the tight end. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. That catch good for five. It's third down. And, partner, I think that's a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. Of the huddle now for play number nine on this drive. This is third down at eight. Set. Green, 39. Green. They'll drop to throw. Hard throw, incomplete. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? The zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him.
the Cardinal offense now making their way back out onto the field. That opening drive ended with the INT. It didn't lead to points, but still not the way they were hoping to begin the game. But how about going and telling your defense, thank you. A huge thank you. You said it didn't lead to points, stalled off that drive. Now they've got a chance to redeem themselves and maybe reward their defense a little bit by putting some points on the board on this one. Fitzgerald's got it right side. And he'll be taken down for a loss back at the three. They'll wind up losing three yards here. And that'll make this a second and 13. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. The loss of three on that first down pass play, now second and 13. Now a handoff, Johnson. And a nice move will yield nothing as he's stopped behind the line. It'll go as a loss of a yard, and it'll set up third down. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. What that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. They'd like to avoid punting from their own end zone so they could use something here on third down. A quick give to Coleman, and he gets it up to the 10-yard line here. It'll be a gain of seven, but I'd imagine we'll see the punt team here on fourth down. Now a good chunk of yardage picked up there, and big fella, sometimes he doesn't need a whole lot of space created. He can make his own way. Here's Andy Lee now, as his first punt will come. Rush comes and they block it. And this turns into disaster. He's not going to get forward progress. That'll be a safety. And you know, the man who sat in my chair the last few years, he has a theory. These plays, these safeties, they're so rare. Maybe they should be worth more than two, maybe four points. I think he's got a great point. I really do, Brandon. But I would go ahead and up it to six. I'm a former defender. Ooh. To me, that's like scoring a touchdown. Easy now. I'll go four. I don't know about six. Come on, come on. Come up to six. <laughs> a lot of points. After the safety, remember, they also need to give up the football. And here's the free kick. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. They'll try and start the drive with Gurley. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. It's the Pro Bowler Chandler Jones who makes the tackle. And he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom. Quick, quick, quick. And what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. All right, here we go. Back to throw now on second and ten. And he's just going to get rid of this thing. To no one here, he throws it away. And now it's third. The threat of a second straight punt to start the game is looming as they come up third and ten. Hurry up, here we go. Three, nine, two. They'll set up to throw. That's going to be complete to his tight end, Everett. And he's taken down but able to slip across the 35. The 13 yards that time of the first. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Hurry up, here we go. They'll look to throw here on first down. Sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. It'll be a gain of six, and it'll be second down. 
We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so right, here's here second go. and four. Right. They'll look to throw. And the open receiver, it's Robert Woods. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. His first catch, good for nine in the first down. Seven of ten here in this first half, and he's got a first and ten. On the handoff, it's Gurley. And down inside the 40 to about the 38. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. Now, look, that wasn't a huge gain, but those are the types of carries I think they were missing in their loss last week. They couldn't get him going on the ground. Did you get the same feeling I did during our meetings that they kind of regretted that he didn't touch the Absolutely. ball? Absolutely. You know, hey, he should have touched him more last week. They weren't going to make that same mistake, and they've taken care of that early. Here we go now. Now back to throw. Throw complete right side to Cooks. And the play goes nowhere. Losing yardage back near the 40 at the 39. Now that was well defended. And as a cornerback, what you're taught when you see a wide receiver screen, either you get underneath the play before the blocking forms, or you're going to have to fight your way through it by getting through some uh, blocking. Green, that was a really 39. nice play there. Green, 39. Delay of game, offense. Set him back five. Still third down. Not ideal there. That delay of game backs him up five yards, so now they need seven yards on third down. Hurry up, here we go. Blue line it. Blue line it. They'll look to throw here, and they'll set up the screen to Gurley. <laughs> And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. As an unbiased observer, I think it would have been interesting to see what they would have done if they hadn't gotten the first down there. But since they did, I guess the point is moot. And they're right there in that middle ground, field goal range, punt, go for it. But as you said, they picked it up. were the highest scoring team in the league last year and they're on the move early with a first and ten back to the ground game here Gurley and he'll snag about five yards down to the 32 getting the sense Charles are going to put a big emphasis this afternoon on the run game and why not what we're seeing so far it's working pretty well from them and here's the best part we always talk about the best performers do their job when the lights come on I think he likes natural Here light best. Back to throw. He gets it to Cooks. And that play is blown up. Losing yardage back at the 35. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there. And it also brings up third down. They threw the screen to the perimeter, but to no benefit at all. Tackled behind the line of scrimmage for a loss of yardage. They're two for two on third down conversions on this drive. This one tough. They need nine yards on third down. They'll look to throw. Man, open, it's cup. He's got it. And they're going to be set up down around the 15-yard line. So a big third down hookup here will take us to the break. 2-0 is our score. EA Sports NFL Sunday returns following this. Back live now to begin the second quarter with Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon. It's the Rams with a football to get us going. And they're on the move here. They've got it first and ten. All right, here we go. Blue lining. Blue lining. 
Now a handoff for Gurley. And able to surge forward for about five yards down to the 10. And when you get good yardage like that on first down, it really does a whole lot of good for your entire offense. But I love the way he's finishing those runs. At the end of things, he's making sure he gets just a little bit extra. Set. Green, 39. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. And he's got it. Nine yards on the play there, and it sets him up first and goal. All that practice time came to fruition on that play. All those timing routes that they work on through training camp, OTAs, mini camp, and just regular season, they got it done on that one. An out cut, ball was delivered, and picked up the completion. Shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And oh, it'll be intercepted. Able to get there and pick it. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Brandon, this is why golfers do their best to never count a score in their head before the ball goes in the cup. This looked like a slam dunk for points on this drive, didn't it? Instead, they throw an interception, and they're going to come away empty. The Cardinal offense here ready to take over. Bradford going to lead the Cardinals up now first and 10 at the 20. And they'll start the drive on the ground with Johnson. And he's going to lose yardage here. Back to his own 18. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. I know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral-type runs. But the best backs that made it happen, they put a foot in the ground and just go. That didn't happen there. That play got swallowed up. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. Delay of game, offense. That's going to set him back five yards. Still second down. It's Johnson. And an alley to run. And he'll go down just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. 11 yards on the pickup. And just like that, it's third down. As David Johnson works his way back from the wrist injury, what are the hesitations, the cautions for him? Well, number one, you want to make sure he's got full strength in the wrist because he's going to carry the football an awful lot, so ball security is important. And you definitely want to make sure there's flexibility there because he's been such a great pass catcher in the past. You want to make sure he gets back to being able to do that as well. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. From the shotgun, it's Bradford. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Nelson. Bradford fighting Nelson for an Arizona first down. Scrimmage the 37 on first and 10. The first down carry here for Johnson. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37 yard line. It's a loss of a yard there and now second down. Part of the thinking when you bring in extra tight ends, you're hoping that each of your guys gets those one on one blocks and creates a crease for your runner. But the converse is though. You've got to win those one-on-one -on -one blocks, and when you don't, 
That's the result you end up with. They'll run it now out of the gun. And hard running's going to get him over the 40 to the 42. It'll be a pickup of five, and that leaves him with five more. Third and five now. On a second and long, it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practice and game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long-distance situation, they can still run the football and gain enough yardage to put themselves in a good spot on third down. His first catch, good for eight and a first down. What I love about watching the passing game nowadays is that the one-dimensional receiver is really starting to leave the game. You've got to be able to do it all. Of course, you've got to run fast. Of course, you've got to catch the ball. But route running savvy and toughness, there's a premium for all of that now. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. They'll run with a former Tar Heel, T.J. Logan. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Now Bradford on second down. Fitzgerald bringing it in over the middle. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. The reception good for seven. It's third down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. on third down tonight. They've been okay. Two for three thus far. They're looking at third in the nose of the football. They'll try and run for it. Here's Johnson. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. At five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. Well, partner, what do you think? Might have been four down territory if they didn't pick it up, but... Yeah, it's a moot point now. I was curious, so if they didn't get it there, would they have gone for it? I guess we'll never know. Yeah, we didn't have to make that call, but I have a feeling both of us would have said, go for it. So from the 36 now, first and 10. They stay on the ground on first with Johnson. And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. Call it a loss of two on the play. And it'll be second and 12. Working out of the gun, Bradford. And they will not get the connection there. It's incomplete. They were looking for Johnson that time. Third down here. Didn't have a receiver open downfield as it turned out. Couldn't even find his outlet, man, because of the coverage. It's way too tight. Unable to find anyone open. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Now Bradford. It's caught. Nelson. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. They give him 17 yards that time as that'll move the chains. I think it all came together there. In-breaking route. Drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Delay of game, offense. So that'll back him up five. Still first down. So a little bit of a stiffer challenge now. First and 15 following the delay of game. Right 
Bradford to throw it. Over the middle, complete. It's Fitzgerald. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the red zone here at the 22-yard line. The completion good for three, and it's second down. taken down right at the 20. He really hasn't been able to get on track running the football, averaging less than four yards a carry. Yeah, I think that they're going to enjoy the film session because all the defenders are filling their proper gaps on just about every play. And you know what they always say for a defensive coach, when I click off this film, I better see 11 jerseys in the picture going after the ball carrier. Caught by Nelson left side. So a good spin move there before he's taken down. A nice little game. They get seven there, but it brings up fourth. They didn't get the first down, but I have to say I do like the call. I like what they were trying to do. Try and hit your receiver on the run and see if he can pick it up. Keep it on his feet. Get a little rack yardage. Yeah, but a nice job defensively to get to him and keep him short of the first. Now that drive just seemed to go for an eternity. I could kind of hear our sponsor saying, hey, we need to get our product pushed here. <laughs> but then it ends in a field goal. Yeah, how about that? Not enough time for product placement, but plenty of time to get three points out of the deal. <laughs> I know that the guys on defense, though, they want to get those products out there. They want to stop that drive, just weren't able to do so. Todd Gurley in the offense. They get set and trot back out there now. He's been good. They've utilized him well, but they're losing here in the second quarter. What might they change offensively? I think that what you try and do is expand how you get the ball to him a little bit. Get him out in open space. Maybe swing the ball to him. What's that they used to call it the West Coast offense, the long handoff? Yeah. Serve as your running play that way as well as continue to feed him the football. Some of these runs now may pop bigger later in the game because of the effects of running it. Sometimes people, after a while, they don't want to tackle him anymore, or they get tired, or they get out of position, or he runs through tackles. Continue to feed him the ball. He's having that kind of game. Yeah, might they get him the ball in some space in some different ways here. So now they'll come up on second and 10, once again from the 28. They'll run it now, out of the gun. Able to shake free for about seven up to the 35. Well, this play sequence was really kind of called in reverse. Incomplete pass on first and 10. Nice run on second and 10 when probably everyone was expecting them to throw the football. Now, if you're the defense, what are they going to do on third down? You're a little uh, off balance. And that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. Still third down. And the delay of game penalty makes this much more difficult. Third and eight. Now let's go. Green, 39. Here's Patty. Got a man over the middle. It's Woods. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. They get seven there, but it brings up fourth. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they come. Well, the Cardinals bring pressure, and they get home. It's blocked. Around the NFL, second quarter in Santa Clara. It's the Lions that have grabbed the early lead. I have a feeling that one's going to stay tight throughout. We'll continue to monitor. Football! 
Here's the Arizona offense now as they get set to take over. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point kicker. Exactly. <laughs> you put it through the post. That's going to help him in contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him in contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. Toe bash. I don't know about that. Toe bash. <laughs> Super toe. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Two minutes to play here in the first half. We're back to the City of Angels after this timeout. A reminder coming up at halftime, the coach is back. He made it through the first weekend. That's the good news, and he's going to regale you with stats and scores from around the NFL here in the early games in week two. You think he questioned coming back for week two, having to work with us? I think he did. He's just happy that he is far away in Orlando. Now a second down throw for Bradford. And this is caught at the eight. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. A couple of vets fighting each other there for a Cardinal first down. Bradford to Fitzgerald. Bradford. Screenplay, Johnson. And we just saw the first touchdown pass as a Cardinal for Sam Bradford. And the Cardinals push further out in front. Getting your back involved, what's the importance there in the passing game? Well, oftentimes you can create mismatches because who's going to cover him? And you get him into space, which is where he likes to operate with the ball in his hands. It oftentimes makes people miss, gets that run after the catch, and off he goes. And into the end zone. Here's Phil Dawson now for the point after. Dawson tacks on the point after, and the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. On the return, it's Farrow Cooper. <laughs> Then he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards, up to the 27-yard line. A look at the running back, the man out of the backfield as he gears up to go again. And a lot of times you talk about establishing the ground game, probably something they need to do more of here losing in the second quarter. When you're riding your best horse, you've got to lather him up. The best running backs I've ever talked to, they've all said the exact same thing to me. I'll even break a good sweat until I get to 20 carries. You're full of good wisdom. Let's see if they can get him into the game more now. It's caught left side by Cooks. A good pick up there at 22. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs, as we just saw there. So one play, and they're already just shy of midfield. He's inside the 40. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. Slam route's effective no matter who's running the route and catching the ball. But when you have a receiver of that stature, you have to be a little bit more precise throwing it. You don't have the same catch radius with the bigger targets. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. First down, he'll drop to throw. Over the middle, that's hauled in by Cup, And he's going to get it down to the 33-yard line here. Now before the second down play, we'll get whistles and a timeout. As he'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. All right, here we go. He'll drop to throw. And that one's complete to Gurley. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Now the Rams will signal for a timeout their second. 
As the clock will stop with 55 seconds to go until halftime. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Now let's go. Three nineteen. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. And now look at him go. The 40, 30, 10. And he will score. Touchdown, Cardinals. Short throw pick six right there, those linebackers. They love when those short throws come and those eyes get real wide, don't they? How about the anticipation on the play? Reading, reacting, and then the ability to catch the football and take it in the opposite direction. Point try now for Dawson. Dawson able to connect on the extra point, and the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. This will be taken about the 12. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Hurry up, here we go. Green, 39. After the pick six, they go right back to the air. And a diving grab. I think he got that. Yes. A really good pickup of 28 yards. There's simply no sense in wasting a great catch like that on a short game. Get downfield like you just did there and use it up that way. No dink and dunk. Set! Green 39! Green 39! They'll look to throw now on first down. Pressure comes and the Cardinals bring him down. And this offense going to elect to burn a timeout with five seconds remaining in quarter number two. On now is the big leg of Greg Zerline. He has hit from as far as 61 away in his career. This was the old NFL record distance for decades, a 63-yard attempt. And that is no good. I oh, hit it well from distance, but he couldn't work it back in. So we reach halftime in what's been a fairly one-sided game so far. As we send you cross-country to Orlando, Jonathan Coachman is there and has our EA Sports halftime report. Okay, Brandon, we'll get you back to you and Charles in a bit. But first, it's time for a trip around the NFL following an eventful opening weekend. Let's see what's happening in week two. Lastly, let's check on one final game for you. And you can see they are scoreless as they play the second quarter. In our game, has been the play of Sam Bradford that stood out to this point. His guys have the lead as we'll hand it back over to our commentators, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Cards with the lead, and they will get this football first as the second half gets started. Now the Rams offense, they work their way back on the field. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive of the second half. Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what adjustments were made in that locker room. 
and I never want to make something more important than it actually is, right? I don't want to create more hype than what is there. But oh, this is a do that? I'm doing it, though. <laughs> this is a really important drive. And we often talk about teams scripting plays to start a game. A lot of them script to start the second half, too. And they're scripting something that they expect to get them into the end zone and back into this game. We'll see if that script is a good one for them. An excellent way to start the drive there, 18 yards. I'm okay with the call there. In fact, I actually like it. I know they're down a couple of scores, but the running game worked in that situation. I would continue to go in that direction. One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. They'll look to throw here on first down. Working the middle here. That's complete to Everett, the tight end. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. A gain of six there on first. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. All right, here we go. Boom, here's Gurley. Boom, it's a gain of four there, and it gives him a new set of downs. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move. First and 10. Gurley again here on first down. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. They're making it look easy out there. Another first down. So, so far on this drive, let me do this little bit of math here. Four plays, three first downs. That's a pretty good recipe for success. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Back to throw now on first down. That'll be caught by Cup. And he works it to the 30-yard line here, right at the 30. That throw good for four. It's second down. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something Three, short, 30, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tougher if guys trying to get to the football. And he's got about five yards as he's taken down right at the 25. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, They've got to pay it off with some points. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Here we go now. Green, 39. They'll set up to throw. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. Picked off by Dayon Buchanan. And his guys are going to take over at the 31-yard line. First possession of the third quarter, an interception, so maybe a second-half tone setter. Indeed, and not the tone they wanted to set. That's the equivalent of running out the wrong door and running into your pool instead of running out onto the field. A real dud for that one. Has that happened to you before? No, but I've heard stories about teams actually doing that back in the good old days. The Cardinals offense now ready to get their first opportunity here in the second half. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, isn't it? I mean, they score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because... What you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, you feel like you can take the spirit away from another team. That Their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. Still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but a guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. Oh, 
Second down, Bradford. In the middle of the field, he's got Nelson. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. Fifth catch of the afternoon, and that gives him a first down. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. Now a play fake here on first down. And the Rams got it. They bring him down. Samson Abukum in there to make the sack. He buries him for a loss of 10. Man, he got in there so quickly, Charles. What could the offense have done to adjust and account for that? But what you're hoping is that you figure it out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you. And you change the blocking schemes. Maybe you go to max protection. The biggest one is maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean. But in that case, that didn't happen. Zero accountability and a sack resulted. And the job becomes twice as difficult now. After the sack, it's second and 20. They'll hand it off now, Johnson. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. That one good for 12 yards. And that's going to lead to a third down. It seemed like the situation was second and a mile to go for a first down, which screams what? Throw the football. you got to pass in order to try and pick up that kind of yardage. But in this case, they ran a tendency breaker because the tendency is for defenses to be out there and be set up for a pass. So you break tendency and actually run the football. That changes everything because if you're able to find a crease, you often have bigger guys working on smaller guys downfield. They picked up excellent yardage there to bring up a third down. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. We saw this a lot in the first half, and it continues. These receivers just not able to get much separation. So that means they have to win the 50-50 balls. They've got to go up with the defender and find a way to start coming down with them. And this time, contact and another incomplete pass. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And three interceptions in this game. And I would have to think, I wasn't a quarterback, but number four is kind of, oh, you're like, oh, man, I can't throw four. No, and what's interesting is, what do the coaches decide to do now? Having thrown three, do you alter your offensive strategy? Do you take the ball out of his hands and maybe turn to the running game? Or do you have that supreme confidence that he's going to turn things around? <laughs> we'll see what they do. They're throwing to start the drive, but that went incomplete. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. He lost four there, and it's third down. But these guys are going to chop into that deficit. They got to do a much better job in the run game. Caught behind the line of scrimmage, no yardage would be found. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Dumps it off to Gurley. And able to use his stiff arm for a little bit of leverage before he's taken down. A pretty good game. Give him six on the play, and that'll bring up fourth down. Instead of throwing it downfield, Charles, they just tried to dump it underneath there. You like the call? I do. I think it's a high percentage play because you get the completion, and what you're counting on is your back to use his legs and his elusiveness to make people miss and pick up the first down. In this case, it didn't happen. Here's Johnny Hacker now. Remember, though, he did have one blocked earlier. <laughs> A seven-yard return following a punt of 45 yards. And the Cards will take over first and 10. And now let's look at David Johnson. And these numbers showing up on the screen, that's why he's their star. They kept him down for a little bit, couldn't keep him down for a full four quarters. But what they were hoping for was a half of the game. <laughs> if they could have shut it down at the half, they had done their job. But as you mentioned, a full four quarters and the best... They always feel like they're one run away from changing the momentum or breaking something big. And we're starting to see that here in the second half. And able to get this one all the way up to about the 46-yard line. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, Makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. To throw is Bradford. And down he goes on the pressure from the Rams defense. Aaron Donald. 
He's the one that got to him. He takes him down for a loss of nine. Like how they've started the third quarter here. They force a punt on the first drive, and after this sack, it looks like they'll be forcing another one as well. Absolutely. Maybe got their second win coming out of the locker room. The Cardinals on third down. They've hit four of seven. This is third and nine. From the shotgun, it's Bradford. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. Akeem Tlaib, the veteran pro bowler, there to get a hand in, knock it away. Certainly looked like they were getting ready to convert there on third down, but what an effort to get his hand on that one, knock it away, and brings up a fourth down decision. Here's Andy Lee now, as he's on to punt for Arizona. field here comes Los Angeles they're gonna have to go at least 50 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time yeah so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line right you're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again so it's not picking up a couple of first downs right, you want to pick up three, five or six down. first downs three, three, and make sure you move the ball into their territory five. they'll start out on the ground with Gurley and he will forge his way forward only up to the two-yard line Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Back to the workhorse today. It's Gurley. And he's able to get this up just shy of the 15. That'll go for a gain of 13, helping big time to get away from that end zone. First down. Well, he does it at a high level, doesn't he? Because when I watch him, I think of his vision. Straight ahead, peripheral, also has that sense of where holes are going to be before they actually open. I think that helps set him apart from many of the other backs in the league. So on the heels of the run by Todd Gurley, another first and ten. First down, he'll drop to throw it. Pressure from his line, and he goes down hard, flat on his back. Marcus Golden in there to bring him down for a loss of seven. Hindsight is 20-20, partner. Maybe they should have kept it on the ground again. Well, it almost looked like the O-line was run blocking again. I mean, they opened up a big hole last time. This time they opened up a hole, and the quarterback got sacked. Now, following the sack, they'll look to make amends on a second down and 17. He'll look to throw. He sets to fire deep. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. The safety, Buda Baker, there to force the incompletion. This defense is continuing to contest every deep ball that is thrown downfield. And look, it doesn't matter whether you're playing man or zone. Eventually, that becomes man on man. And you've got to trust yourself and go up at that moment of truth and make a play on the football. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Hurry up, here we go. Boom. Here's Patty. This is caught, it's Cooks. And he's able to get this one all the way past the 30. A really nice gain of 25 yards. He's such a good route runner, shows it there on third down, very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's gonna have in you to go to you at important times because he can trust you being in the right spot and they connected there and picked up a first down. All right, here we go. They'll run it now out of the gun. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. 
I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. Still second down. So the delay of game penalty moves it back five. That makes it second and ten. Set! Three and 19! Three and 19! They'll set up a throw. They'll throw underneath for Gurley. They'll get nothing out of that one and it's going to lead to a third down. Pass complete. But no game. No yards. Yeah. So you file that as unsuccessful. Yeah, you do, don't you? Except on the stats, throwing the ball. Get a completion. You get a catch. Yeah. But still, up, no yardage. Yard. Okay. They'll look to throw here. Throw right side is into the hands of his tight end, Everett. We have played three quarters. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now in Los Angeles. It's the Rams trailing, but they do have the football as we start the fourth and final quarter. Here's Johnny Hacker now. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. And problems spreading to the punt team now. This one goes all the way into the end zone on the fly, so that'll come back to the 20. Arizona getting ready to go as they take the field. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. No gain on the play there. Second down. But Brandon Pace comes into play now because they've got the advantage. They've got the football. But they've got to be very careful about what speed they're going to play. You know, my, my music teacher back in New Paltz, this is by Thema Bagley, used to say, don't go prestissimo when you really want to go largo. And what she meant by that is don't go too fast when you really want to go at a nice, slow, deliberate pace. I am speechless. I am without speech. They right, call his number again. It's his sixth catch and a first down. Well, probably the only thing he did wrong there was go out of bounds, nursing this fourth quarter lead. You want to stay in, eat the clock. Yeah, you got to love the effort, the catch, the extra yardage, but you've got to know the situation. Stay in bounds, young man. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. They go play action here on first down. And the Rams got it. They bring him down. Following that sack, looks like we've got an injured man down there on the field. While the training staff takes a peek, we'll take a break. Yeah. Got to imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18. All right, here we go. Three, a first throw for the backup, Rosen. And his first throw here is incomplete. Johnson was the intended receiver, and it's third down. Over with a dime look on defense. Two extra Three defensive backs 19. on the field have covered Three up essentially 19. every blade of grass. That allowed them to disrupt the play. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Aaron Donald in there to get him. His second sack now in the afternoon. Brandon, more often than not, you'd say they've had his number, and we can count them up so far. One, two, three, four sacks given up. But guess what? He's still been able to make some plays, and right now they have a lead. Here's Andy Lee now as he's on to punt for Arizona. Taken from just outside the 30. 12 yards on the return that time. And the Rams will go on offense here for the first and 10. They are on to the fourth quarter now, by the way, in Santa Clara. Now you saw the score at the bottom of your screen a moment ago. We got a good one going on there. 
A win would be their second on the young season. Good starting field position for them as they come up first and 10. now right side complete that's Woods and they'll get him down as he's inside the 40 first play of the drive a success 19 yards at this stage this drive's got to be touchdown or bust because you need two of them and if I'm the offensive play caller I'm not just looking at my dagger plays downfield I'm looking at some of my specials something that can fool them and give you a big play now with a sense of urgency no doubt so from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Green, 39. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll work it inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll make it second and a foot or so. Now let's go. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old-school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads. Bowled over a few people. Look at that one. Right up the gut. So up through three quarters. No reason to lighten up now. Before the game, they were running the route tree about as efficiently and effectively as we could have possibly imagined. But sometimes the passes just go awry. Yeah, let's face it. When you're running the route tree in pregame, you don't have defenders breathing down your neck. You don't have defensive backs making plays on the football. Hard to replicate the intensity of the game in pregame. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. We have not seen a whole lot of wide-open receivers. Everything seemingly has been contested. And that's another nice job there to force an incompletion. They've been very cohesive, knowing each other's moves all game long, and they've been on the spot just about every time. And they've held them in check on the scoreboard. So he missed his first attempt, remember, but this time he gets back on the bike and knocks it home. Yeah, and sometimes that first one can really impact you moving forward. It can just stay with you too long and affect everything else you do during the game. In this case, though, able to shake it off. He's riding high again. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Arizona getting ready to go as they take the field. And right now, these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting, because three straight drives have ended with him putting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. The beauty of being able to play a zone defense when you can sit back and see the ball coming out of the quarterback's hands, guess what? It creates a lot of confusion, kind of a muddle in the middle of the field where you go make a play on the football. And he'll get this one up to the 26. Only a yard in the pickup there, and it'll bring up a third down. Bottom line, they want to keep this clock rolling, so they'll take that one right there. They just want to keep falling forward, and they want to put the onus on the big fellas up front in order to bring this one home. On third down, Bradford. And this one complete to Jermaine Gresham. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. First target, first catch, and a first down. One of the advantages of zone defense, as I remember it, is being able to see the play develop in front of you. One of the disadvantages, when they find those levels where they can hit you with it, sometimes behind the corner and in front of the safety, it makes it tough to defend. Bradford now 6-for-6 six six since coming back out of the locker room. It's 1st and 10. The attempt on the dive, and he has it. What a catch. 15 yards through the air and a 1st down. I know a retirement ceremony is a rocking chair is often one of the major gifts, but don't give this guy one just yet. He may be plus 30, but my goodness, how about that effort? Yeah, he's not that old. Hey, I'm on the wrong side of 32. You, you, you okay? You feeling all right? <laughs> I'll be all right. Okay, good. I just need some chocolate and a box of tissues. <laughs> if nothing else, they've already taken a couple minutes off the clock here already as they come up second down. Again, it's Johnson. And he's going to get this one down near the 45-yard line. Give him three on the run there. Now they're looking at a third and about five. 
The recipe is pretty simple, I think, right? Just <laughs> give your superstar the ball, continue to feed him. Yeah, don't overthink this one, right? Make sure he's touching the football, but you're also counting on his intelligence in playing the game as well. If it's not there, don't force the run. Just make sure you hang on to the football and keep the clock ticking. And he'll lose yardage here, back at the 47. This will be a two-yard loss on the play. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. Here's Andy Lee now as he's on to punt for Arizona. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. That's taken on the 25. It'll be just an 18-yard punt. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. And the Rams getting set to go now. And tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal way of doing it makes it that much harder and puts more pressure on every possession for you now. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Bigger chunks. We'll see if they can get the score. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and that'll bring up a second in just about a few inches here. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. I can just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. He'll look to throw. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he had been able to haul that one in. The offense on third down tonight. They've converted five times in their many chances thus far. They're looking at third and a few inches. Let's go. Green 39. Green 39. Looking to throw. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. They only get two there, but on third and one, that's all they needed to keep the drive going. Fourth quarter, every drive's so critical, and you figure may only get one more shot after this, so a touchdown's imperative on this drive. It is, but you also have to think to yourself in play calling, don't hold anything back. Don't save it for the second touchdown. You got the first one for the second one to even matter. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Here we go now. Green 39. They'll look to throw now on first down. Over the middle. That's hauled in by Cup. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. A gain of six there on first. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Now let's go! Green, 39! They're going to look to throw. And that one almost intercepted. Far too loose with the football here. Nearly a fourth pick. And it's third down. I'm trying to decipher what's going on out there because I don't know if he's just getting bad reads. I don't know if the defense is confusing him. I don't know if he just has, you know, bad info and intel before he snaps the ball. But he's made some pretty bad decisions with the football lately. Yeah, several bad decisions on the interceptions he's thrown in. Frankly, that should have been another pick right there. On third down, they'll run it with Gurley. And he will have the first down as he gets this to the 47. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. Brandon, coach, I've been here before. They've had two opportunities to stop them, so this is demoralizing. They haven't gotten it done. Now you're calling all your blitzes, all your attack defenses, but you're not worried about playing your normal position. You're going to take chances now. Well, you said it. Two third-down opportunities to get off the field. Couldn't do it, and the clock continues to roll. A couple of first downs on the drive already as they'll go from the 47 now on first down. Back to throw now on first down. They got a man over the middle. It's Woods. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. A good gain of 14 there, and it moves the chains. 
But correct me if I'm wrong, you know, you're down two scores. I don't think you need to rush just yet, but you can't take your time either. Yeah, even if you don't want to commit to full two-minute offense, you have to up the tempo, up the urgency. Maybe you're starting to call two plays in a huddle each time you snap the ball. man out of the backfield they've looked his way quite a bit so far in this game nice job there defensively though adjusting because a couple of his earlier catches he was wide open not that time you mentioned the key word adjustment a better cover man on him now in space throwing for his running back and he's got him complete call it a gain of three and they're gonna have a third down everyone's got to be able to catch the football doesn't matter what position you play but if you're on offense be aware, a ball may come your way. An eight-play drive to this point. So here's play number nine on third and seven. Green. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll lose yardage. Brought down at the 32. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. Well, look at the clock. You're down two scores. Have to go for this, don't you? And they thought that as soon as they took over possession. It didn't matter where they were on the field. They were always going to be in four-down territory backed up in good situation it didn't matter so they've been preparing for that on their play sheet the entire time all right they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down they're going for it hey 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 four down four down four down so it's rams football here as we get your reset they come up on a fourth down situation with things not looking particularly rosy. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. Hurry up, here we go. Green, 39. Green, 39. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And no, it's incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Cardinal defense is going to get the football back. Well, they had to take one final shot at the end zone, but now things are looking really bleak. And I agree with that totally. You had to take the shot if they did score. You know, whether you call it a miracle or not, you line up, onside kick, get the ball back, throw one more in the end zone, who knows? Had to take the chance, it just was unsuccessful. Arizona getting ready to go as they take the field and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not pump the ball again. Well, a pretty move couldn't create much space. Down just beyond the 35. And now we're going to get a timeout defensively. So another stop, 150 left in the football game. Here we go. Have to imagine this will be on the ground as well as they come up second and seven. They go to Johnson again. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Now the Rams will signal for a timeout their second as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. To throw on third down. Bradford. And able to find Kirk complete. And he finally goes down, but not before reaching the 21. And this, the kind of drive that the Cards envisioned when they gave Bradford the keys to this offense. It's first and ten. Bradford, wow, he's going to throw. 
Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. So now 20 yards to go on second down after the sack. Work to be done. Down to a knee. Here's the Cardinals look to let the clock roll. So it's third and long, and defensively, not a real surprise. They're in the dime. And the final play here will be Bradford going down to a knee. A road win in the National Football League. Charles, you never take that for granted no matter who you're playing, no matter where you're playing. You take it and you run with it. <laughs> and you know you primed the pump all week in your own home facility. No one thinks we can do this. Only people who believe are right here in this room. And then you go on the road, band together, and get it done. So for the Cardinals, it was a great all-around performance as they come out of this one with the victory. And they'll head back home next week to take on the Chicago Bears. Meanwhile, for L.A., they'll drop to 0-2. And they will get a home date next week against the Los Angeles Chargers. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Alongside Charles Davis, we thank our entire crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. This is the NFL on EA Sports.